In this video, we're going to look at the mother vertex problem. For this problem, we're going to define a mother vertex as a vertex in a graph such that there exists a path from this vertex to all other vertices in the graph. Our problem is, given a directed graph G, does there exist a mother vertex in the graph? And if there does, find it. In order to solve this problem, you're going to need to know the concepts of depth first search and finishing time in depth first search. The mother vertex does not have to be unique, you can return any of them, and the optimal solution will ultimately be O of V plus E, where V is the number of vertices and E is the number of edges. Let's look at a couple examples just to clarify that we understand this problem. For this graph, we notice that there is a single mother vertex, vertex 2, which I've highlighted it in red. This fits the definition of mother vertex because from vertex 2, there is a path from that vertex to every other vertex in the graph. All the other vertices are not mother vertices. For this graph, we notice that there are multiple mother vertices, which I have colored red. I'll let you prove for yourself that for any of these red vertices, you can reach all the other vertices in the graph. Either of the mother vertices are correct to return in this case. For this example, there does not exist a mother vertex. I'll let you inspect for yourself that regardless of which vertex we choose as a candidate for a mother vertex, there is at least one other vertex in the graph that cannot be reached with a path from this candidate. For this example, there are separate components, so it's pretty obvious that there is no mother vertex. Now that we have a bit of a better understanding of the problem, let's quickly look at the graph implementation and review depth first search before we dive into our actual solution. Let's start with the graph data structure we're going to use. For the purposes of this problem, we're just going to use a simple implementation. It's by no means best and there's no error checking, but it gets the job done and for the scope of an interview problem, it's okay. The underlying data structure behind this graph class is just gonna be a dictionary of vertices. Each vertex in the dictionary is mapped to a list of other vertices, which represents the edge set for that vertex. This is basically an adjacency list representation and to create a graph, we can just call constructor, add some vertices and add some edges. So if we wanted to model the following graph, we would make the following calls in main. And this would be what the underlying dictionary in main would look like. I would take a moment to pause the video and just make sure that you understand the representation. But if you understand how the graph is implemented, let's move on to depth first search. So I hinted earlier that depth first search is going to be needed for this problem. So let's quickly refresh ourselves on the algorithm. I'm going to assume that you're familiar with the depth first search algorithm for graphs, because this is just going to be a quick review. If you're not, I recommend you watch the video the linked in my description explaining depth first search in more detail before continuing on with this video. Depth first search is an algorithm that starts at a source vertex in a graph and traverses the graph in a manner where we go deeper from the source whenever possible. Every time a vertex is visited, we mark it as visited and at the end of depth first search, all the nodes that can be reached from the source should be marked as visited. If not all the vertices in the graph can be visited by that source, we choose a new unvisited vertex as our source and we continue our depth first search. We repeat this process until all the vertices in the graph have been visited. There are various implementations of depth first search out there, but we're gonna start with this one, which is most useful to our brute force solution. For now, it just prints out the nodes in order of exploration, but we're gonna add and tweak to this for our solution. You can check your understanding by pausing the video here and verifying that if we start a depth first search on the graph with vertex two as the source, We'll get the following printed out as the order of traversal. It should also make sense to you that the order of 3 and 0 does not matter, and that if the 3 came before the 0, this would also be deemed as a valid depth first search. Now that we have a better understanding of the components of this problem, let's look at the brute force solution. The key to the brute force solution is understanding that depth first search will explore every vertex that it can and mark it as visited. So our brute force solution can literally just run depth first search on every single vertex. And after every depth first search, check the visited dictionary to see if they are all marked true, meaning that the vertices are all visited. If all the vertices were marked true, then we know that from this source vertex, we can reach every other vertex in the graph. Therefore, this source vertex is a mother vertex. Let's look at the actual code for this solution. So let's add our solution function, which runs depth first search on every node in the graph. Next, we need to modify depth first search in order to learn whether all the vertices are visited or not. As we discussed earlier, for a certain source vertex, depth first search will explore all the possible vertices that can be reached from that source vertex and mark them as visited. However, we also discussed that if all the vertices have not been reached, 
depth first search will explore an arbitrarily chosen unvisited vertex as the source. Since we're only interested in whether or not all the vertices can be reached from one vertex as the source, let's get rid of the code which will continue the search if not all the vertices can be reached. Let's also add code which checks if all the vertices were visited at the end of the traversal. If all the vertices were visited, we return true, and we return false if there was an unvisited vertex. Let's also get rid of the print statement because that was just there for the demonstration of how DFS works. Now we modify our mother vertex function to record whether or not DFS returned true. If it does return true, we know that using that particular vertex as a source, we can reach all other vertices in the graph. Therefore, that vertex is a mother vertex, so we can return it immediately. If it returns false, we continue checking the other vertices, and if we make it through all the vertices and they all return false from their depth first searches, then we'll return null, indicating that there is no mother vertex. Once we have done this, we're finished with the brute force solution. Let's analyze the time and space complexity for this solution. Let's start with time. Worst case, we run depth first search v times. Therefore, our running time is simply v times the time it takes for depth first search. You should already know that the running time of depth first search is v plus e. Therefore, the running time of our overall algorithm is o of v times v plus e. For space, the maximum space we use is for the size of our visited dictionary and the size of our potential recursive calls. Both of these are worst case on the order of O of V, so that's our space complexity. Now that we have gotten this solution out of the way, let's try and improve the running time of our solution. As I mentioned earlier, we're shooting for a running time on the order of O of V plus E. I would recommend you pause the video here and attempt to find that solution before I show it to you. Okay, assuming you've given it a try, let's look at the improved solution. But before we can, we need to revisit depth first search and make some additions. More specifically, we need to review the idea of finishing time in depth first search. Finishing time just describes the relative order of when the vertices are finished being explored. A vertex is said to be finished when there are no more deeper vertices that that vertex can explore. Again, if you have not heard of finishing time, I would recommend you watch the depth first search video in the description, which goes into more detail. In terms of our code, a node is first discovered at the beginning of the recursive call and is finished at the end of our recursive call. You should check your understanding by verifying the following discovery and finishing orders make sense with the following graph when DFS is run with node zero as the source vertex. Note that there are multiple valid orders, depending on which vertex you recursively decide to visit first, so this is just one of the possible valid orders. And here's another example where not all the nodes can be reached from the initial source of zero. Again, this is just one of the possible orders. Now that we understand finishing time, we come to the key part of our improved solution. The key part is that we must realize the following conditional statement. If there does exist one or more mother vertices, then one of them has to be the vertex with the last finishing time in a depth first search using any vertex in the graph as a source. In less formal terms, this means that if we run depth first search on a graph with any arbitrary vertex as our initial source, and there happens to be one or more mother vertices in the graph, then the vertex with the last finishing time must be one of those mother vertices. You might be skeptical that this statement is true, so I promise I'll prove it to you after we look at the solution code. But for now, just trust me, and let's develop a solution under the assumption that this statement holds. So if we assume this statement to be true, then our solution can become quite straightforward. We can first start off with modifying depth first search to keep track of finishing time and running this modified depth first search on G. We can then record whatever vertex finish last. Let's call the vertex with the last finishing time F. Finally, since we can assume that if there is one or more other vertices in G, F must be one of them, this is our key statement, we can simply run depth first search again using F as our source. But this time, our depth first search will end early as soon as all the vertices that can be reachable from F have been visited. This is similar to the depth first search in our brute force solution. If all the vertices can be reached, then we know it's a mother vertex. If it can't, then we assume that there are no mother vertices in the graph G. Remember that we can make this assumption because our key statement is that if there is a mother vertex, the last finished vertex has to be one of them. Okay, now let's jump into the actual coded solution. Let's start with our depth for a search. We want to modify it to keep track of the finishing times. We're going to do this by editing our visited dictionary to not only hold a visited boolean, but also a timestamp of the finishing time. For now, all these finishing times will be null values. 
We also need to edit our access to the visited dictionary to grab the zeroth index because the value for a key is now a list and not a single element. In order to keep track of time, we're going to add a global time variable which can be shared between the depth first search and depth first search helper functions. Whenever a vertex is finished, we will store the finishing time in the visited dictionary and increment the global time variable. Now let's create our improved mother vertex function, which first calls our DFS algorithm with an arbitrary source vertex. I've just chosen zero as the source for simplicity. Now our next step is to record which vertex finished last. In order to do that, let's actually return our visited dictionary from the depth first search function. This will allow us to do a simple scan and find which vertex has the last finishing time. Our third step is to run DFS again with F as the source. However, there's one problem. Our current version of depth first search runs to completion and picks new vertices if there are vertices that cannot be visited by the source. We need the depth first search to run to completion for our first call. However, for our second call, we don't want this to happen. For our second call, we want our DFS to terminate as soon as all the vertices which are reachable from the source have been visited. Therefore, let's make the call to DFS with F as our source, but modify our DFS algorithm, giving it a parameter to either run to completion or terminate as soon as all the reachable vertices from a source have been visited. And now our final step is to check if all the vertices were visited with F as the source. If this is the case, we know that all other vertices in the graph are reachable from F, so F is a mother vertex. If any other vertex was not visited, then we know that there exists a vertex that is not reachable from F, so F is not a mother vertex, so we return none, symbolizing that there does not exist a mother vertex in G. But remember that this solution is only correct if the key statement I mentioned earlier is actually true. I promised I would prove it's true, so let's do that now. Let's use a proof by contradiction. For sake of contradiction, let's assume the opposite, that there can exist a mother vertex, M, and it is not the vertex with the last finishing time in DFS, and the vertex with the last finishing time F is not a mother vertex. Since we know M is a mother vertex, by definition of a mother vertex, we know that all other vertices G, including F, are reachable from our mother vertex, M. Now we can divide our proof into two possible cases. The first case is that there does exist some path, either with a direct edge or through some other vertices, from F to M. I've indicated the possible paths in red. The second case is that there is no path from F to M. For the first case, we can see that the following is true. Using F as a source vertex, we can reach all the other vertices in G. This is because we can use the red path to reach M, and since M is a mother vertex, we know that from M we can reach all the other vertices in G. So since we can reach all other vertices G from F, F can be defined as a mother vertex. However, in our original assumption, we said that F was not a mother vertex. Since F is and is not a mother vertex at the same time, we've arrived at a contradiction. Now for case two, when there is no path from F to M, let's inspect how DFS would run. DFS proceeds in a depth first manner. We know that in a depth first search, M must have finished after F did. This is because if M was discovered before F, then F would have been discovered depth first after M. But that means it would have to finish before M could finish. This is just by the definition of finishing time in depth first search. The other case is that if F was discovered before M, then since there's no path from F to M, then M would not be discovered depth first through F. This would mean that F would have to be finished before M was discovered, and consequently, M would have to finish after F. In either case, M finishes after F. However, in our assumption, we said that F was the vertex with the last finishing time. So since we know it can't be the case that F is a vertex with last finishing time, but M finishes after F, we know we've arrived at a contradiction. Since we arrived at contradiction for both cases, we know that the assumption we made for contradiction must be false, namely the assumption that there can exist a mother vertex M and it is not the vertex with the last finishing time in the DFS. And a vertex with the last finishing time F is not a mother vertex. So therefore, our key statement, which is the opposite of our assumption, must be true. Here's the transcript of the entire proof in case you want to see the written proof in words. But now that I've proven the key statement, I hope you're convinced that the algorithm does indeed work. Let's analyze the time and space complexity now. For time, our most costly step is the DFS searches. 
we run two passes of DFS, and therefore our time complexity is just O of two times the running time of DFS, which is the same as O of two times V plus E. And since two is a constant, we can say our overall running time is just O of V plus E, which is what we were shooting for. The most amount of space we use is our visited dictionary or our potential recursive calls in DFS, both of which are on the order of O of V. So our space then is just O of V. And that's it for the second solution. So I hope you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. But for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.